cruise news, I'm going to share an important update on the missing cruise passenger in Cozumel, Mexico. I will also be sharing what to be on the lookout for if you happen to be in Cozumel. I'm going to get you the details. Plus, I have the top 10 cruise news updates from across the cruise industry, and I'm going to get you the information fast. Coming up. Welcome to the Travel Scouts. My name is Jason and we are your cruise information channel. We get you the cruise news and information you're looking for quickly without wasting your time. So if you love cruising, consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and kick things off with number one. Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings has announced the largest new ship order in their company's history. They operate three distinct cruise brands, including Norwegian Cruise Line, Oceania Cruises, and Regent Seven Sea Cruises. And the company's newly placed ship order includes eight ships that will be delivered between 2026 and 2036. Norwegian Cruise Line will receive four new ships during the year shown on the screen, Oceania Cruises will receive two new ships, and Regent Seven Seas will receive two as well. Number two, the Alaska cruise season is officially underway. The Norwegian Bliss cruise ship is leading the way as the first cruise ship of the season. The first stop for the vessel was in Sitka, Alaska. The Alaska cruise season typically runs through the end of September. However, every once in a while, a sailing may stretch into October. Moving on to number three, MSC Cruises held a steel cutting ceremony for their new ship, the MSC World Asia. This will be the third ship in the class. The first in the world class was the MSC World Europa that launched in 2022. And the MSC World America is scheduled to launch in 2025. Each vessel in this class sells distinctly in the region identified by its continental name. The MSC World Asia is expected to launch in 2026. Speaking of MSC Cruises, number four, MSC has announced a new thrill ride that will debut on their World America cruise ship when it launches next year. The name of the ride is the Cliffhanger. It has seats for four passengers and it swings them from the top deck out over the sea 160 feet above the water's surface. It looks and sounds interesting. The MSC World America will be based in Miami. The maiden voyage is scheduled for April 12th of 2025. Then number five, the 2024 State of the Cruise Industry Report has been released. Here are some of the highlights. The total number of cruise passengers last year was 31.7 million, beating the pre-pandemic number by 7%. And this year is expected to see another huge increase, advancing by another 4 million to 35.7 million cruise passengers. The report also revealed that loads of people that have never cruised before are giving cruising a try. Over the last two years, 27% of all cruisers have been first-timers. And industry growth is set to continue with 56 new ships coming online between 2024 and 2028. Okay, we have five cruise news pieces remaining, including the top headlines of the day, but it is time for our fast mid-show check-in. In the last video, I asked you what type of transportation you normally take from the airport to your cruise ship if you fly into the cruise embarkation city. We received input from more than 2,000 of you, and here are the results. 11% of you said that you take a taxi, 47% the most said that you take Uber or Lyft, and 42% said that you take some sort of shuttle service. Thanks for your input, and I enjoyed reading the comments. Here is today's question. When you go to main dining on a cruise, do you prefer to A, get a table for just you and the people that you are on the cruise with, or B, do you prefer to be seated at a table with other guests so that you can meet new people? Chime in down below with your preference. I will look forward to reading that, but now on with the cruise news. Number six, Carnival Corporation has put their Miami headquarters building up for sale. Carnival acquired its current building in 1983. However, since the pandemic, many of their corporate employees now work remotely. So the company is looking to cash in on the hot Miami real estate market and downsize into a more suitable space. The corporation still intends for its next building to also be in the Miami area. Number seven, Royal Caribbean has announced their fleet deployment for the 2025-2026 Australia season. The Anthem of the Seas cruise ship will begin home porting from Sydney, Australia for the first time. It will offer 24 cruises ranging from 3 to 18 nights in length. Additionally, the Voyager of the Seas cruise ship will be a returning favorite to Australia. It will home port in Brisbane. The Voyager will offer 20 sailings ranging from 4 to 12 nights in length. All of these cruises are open for booking. Moving on to number eight, Norwegian Cruise Line is launching a peer development project for their private island in the Bahamas called Great Stirrup Key. Great Stirrup Key is currently a tender island. 
That means that small boats have to be used to take cruise passengers from the ship to the island. But once a $150 million pier project is completed, the cruise line will be able to dock two cruise ships at the island at the same time. The docking capability will make the private island accessible by more cruisers. And it will make the port of call less likely to be canceled when the water is choppy due to rough weather. The pier project is scheduled to start this summer and it is expected to be completed by the end of next year. Next, number 9, Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas cruise ship has installed an innovative assistive audio system that will help cruisers that have hearing impairment. The Icon of the Seas is Royal Caribbean's newest and it is the world's largest cruise ship. And the Icon's new assistive audio will enable users to get audio directly to their hearing device when they are in places such as the main theater to watch a show or the Playmaker Sports Lounge to watch a game. All users have to do is download the Listen Everywhere app and connect their hearing device. And the app has many functions. For example, you can even get a show translated into your primary language. Then, number 10, an update on the search for the missing cruise passenger in Cozumel, Mexico. Edmund Solomon, who goes by Brad, has been missing in Cozumel, Mexico since April 3rd. Brad is a retired VA critical care nurse from Charleston, South Carolina, and he also has dementia. Brad arrived in Cozumel on Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas cruise ship. He was cruising with his wife, whose name is Mimi. Soon after getting off the ship on April 3rd, Brad went to the bathroom, but he seemed to vanish and his family never saw him come out. Brad's wife notified authorities. When he was not found, his daughter and others dropped everything and flew to Cozumel to assist in the search. Land, air, and sea assets have been used, but he has still not been found. The daughter and others are crying out for help. In a statement, she said, quote, I am terrified that if I don't post something, our story will become irrelevant and that the U.S. will forget about us. She went on to say, I am trying to think of something to say to keep everyone updated, but I am feeling empty and discouraged and exhausted. And if we put ourselves in their family's shoes, this is a heart-wrenching situation. The world begins to move on, but you can't give up on your dad. Within our family, Kelly's mom currently has advanced Alzheimer's, so this story definitely hit home for us. The daughter of Brad went on to make this plea, quote, We are begging for you to share this on social so that we can increase awareness and gain more news coverage. The more people who are aware, the quicker we will find him. So I don't know how much sharing this update will help, but we wanted to do what we could to assist, so please spread the word if you can. And if you are cruising to Cozumel, Mexico, be on the lookout. Here are some pictures of Brad, and this is what his daughter Savannah said to watch for in order to be able to spot him. She said, my dad walks really fast and he does not have eyeglasses on like he usually does. He will often nod his head down and focus on the ground while walking. The more anxious he is feeling, the quicker he goes. He generally has a calm or apathetic attitude and will probably refuse help if offered, especially from a stranger. She said that he will seem confident like he knows where he is going, but he does not. He is lost and scared. He cannot show or process emotions like a healthy person would. Unfamiliar people or situations are intimidating to him. He does not know how to respond and will avoid them. So if you're going to Cozumel, be on the lookout. Otherwise, we can all spread the word. Thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you in the next video.